thank you. Um, hi everyone, hope you've had a nice lunch. Um, so yeah, I'm currently at the start of my master's research project. I'm currently studying climate change and environmental policy. Um, and my research is on examining the role re restaurants can play in encouraging changes in meat consumption patterns for climate change mitigation. So I'm gonna give a really, really brief overview of my planned project, because I haven't actually started and got results to relay to you, um, to demonstrate its intended contribution to encouraging climate action. So meat production um, and consumption is a large emitter of greenhouse gas emissions and contributes significantly to climate change. Um, it is well evidenced that a significant reduction of meat in diets is required to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but many people are reluctant to change their consumption of meat for various different reasons. This is problematic given that current meat consumption, especially in Western countries like the UK, is too high and we must re significantly reduce this in order to stay within the planetary boundaries and meet national and international climate mitigation goals. Um, there is a lack of research on meat and non-meat provision from the perspective of restaurants, with most research focusing on the perspe um, perspectives and perceptions and behaviours of consumers. Um, providers of meat such as supermarkets and restaurants are in a position of influence, so they have a great opportunity to encourage changes in meat consumption patterns. So it's important to look at restaurants because a large proportion of meat is consumed when eating out. Plus, if restaurants can encourage changes in meat consumption within their environment, there is potential that any behavioural changes may spill over into people's private lives. So changes in meat consumption for climate mitigation means transitioning to more sustainable meat use. And this can be done in four ways, also known as the four R's. So we've got reducing the use of meat, replacing meat with alternative proteins, refining the use of meat. So reducing meat waste and using better quality meat and recognising those in the meat production process in order to value the meat that we eat. So it's not just about reducing our meat consumption, it is a little bit more complex than that. Um, so all in all, meat consumption patterns do need to change. Um, so with this in mind, my research aims to generate a better understanding of the provision of meat and non-meat alternatives in restaurants and the interventions that the food sector, um, the food service sector can implement to help promote climate action through sustainable eating habits in alignment with two of the UN's sustainable development goals. So we've got Sustainable Development Goal 12, which is responsible consumption and production and Sustainable Development Goal 13, which is climate action. So my research questions are, what are restaurants' perceptions of the provision of meat? What, if anything, are restaurants doing to encourage changes in meat consumption patterns? What are their motivations? And what key barriers do restaurants identify in changing meat consumption patterns? So to answer my research questions, I'm conducting a case study method with multiple cases, cases being restaurants, um, and I'll be conducting interviews with managers of the restaurants and doing documentary analysis of their menus. And then to identify restaurants for the multiple case study, I've created the framework on the right, which consists of four categories of restaurant profiles, whether they serve vegetarian food only or not, and whether they identify their provision of food as sustainable, so through sourcing local and seasonal produce or not. Having cases in each of these categories will give me a good range of profiles to explore restaurant perspectives from, which is why I've implemented it. Um, and then in terms of a timeline, I'm now starting to identify participants to interview and do my menu analyses on. And we'll be collecting this data from now until mid-July. And then I'll be coding and analysing my data, reflecting on my research questions um, until the end of July. And then I'll be finalising and writing up the project ready to submit by the end of um, August, which is my deadline. Um, so yeah, so that's a really quick overview of my project. And I hope that with my results, to be able to contribute to encouraging climate action in everyday lives. Thank you. You're on mute, Claire. Sorry. Oh, thanks, Katie. That was great. Um, so yeah, so please do um, feed through any questions that you've got for Katie. Um, first of all, I just wanted to sort of um, just ask about how you were kind of selecting the restaurants, obviously thinking about the cultural mix of of restaurants and things like that within the within the study. Yeah, so it's been quite um quite interesting. So I'm selecting cases from within Yorkshire, so the lead centric area, um, and then expanding out to wider Yorkshire, and even just identifying um restaurants that are vegetarian and sustainable or sustainable and not vegetarian has been quite 
quite tough. It's not really possible to focus on one city, which is why I've chosen the wider Yorkshire area. Um, but yeah, so I have sort of tried to include all different types of cuisines, um, but mainly the criteria come from um, restaurants that are table service. So I'm looking at anything where customers sit down and are brought food. So um, I'm not looking at fast food restaurants. I'm not looking at um, buffets just because I want to, the managers to be able to reflect on experiences that they've had with sort of communications with customers and obviously table service gives you that opportunity. Um, in terms of covering sort of other cultural dishes, like I say, I'm, I'm not really specifying a particular kind of cuisine. It's just sort of what's available, whether they're vegetarian or not. A lot of I've been able to identify um, some vegetarian cafes or vegetarian um, Indian restaurants or there's the meat options, which are um, I don't know. We've got I've got Greek restaurants. I've got Turkish restaurants in the pipeline. But if they've not um, specified on their website, whether they're you know sourcing locally, sourcing seasonally, um, paying their staff fair wages, um, then they, they don't sort of fit into those categories and they would be covered in the not vegetarian, not sustainable option. So I am hoping to sort of get a bit of a representative um, food sector spread, but it just depends on what they're advertising themselves as on their websites. Right, OK. Um, if anybody else wants to post um, some questions through, um, and I, I just wondered around, um, you know, obviously it'd be interesting to look at how they're presenting the alternatives to me as a, a conscious choice, but also as an enjoyable choice as well. I think sometimes, you know, they've, they've obviously got a role in relation to the behaviour change around food enjoyment and see, seeing these alternatives as, you know, on par or, you know, or, or, you know, better options in terms of the food enjoyment aspect as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm quite interested to sort of find out what meaning that they attribute to meat. So especially in vegetarian restaurants, are they advertising their burgers as chicken or beef burgers? Or are they calling it what it is, which is, I don't know, soy or beetroot or aubergine? Is it, are they trying to give it a meat spin with the name? Or are yeah. they marketing it as the plant-based alternative or the, the protein alternative that it is? Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to sort of draw those those bits out um, when I start the interview process and sort of within the documentary anal analysis as well. I think as well, it's quite interesting to look at the um, where on the menu things are placed at the vegetarian or the plant-based alternatives that they put in amongst the main dishes or are they given their own section so people have to look specifically for that um, so all of these there's a lot of sort of marketing and techniques that restaurants can use and I'm hoping to sort of get an idea of what restaurants think that they're consciously doing or whether it's an unconscious thing. Yeah that sounds great well I hope we hope that you're able to kind of share your your further research as it progresses. Thank you. Um, so yeah there is a question we've got um It'd be great if I could hear more about what refine means in meat in meat consumption reduction. Yeah, so I, I know that we haven't really got much time, but yeah, refining is it covers quite a few different things. So there's refining the use of meat in terms of not wasting large portions of meat and letting that go to sort of landfill or whatever. So refining the use of what specifically is it about meat that you're using um, and also where, where it's sourced. Are you sourcing locally? Are you sourcing seasonally? There's just a lot of things that when you come to um, to buy to purchase your meat and whether and how you provision it um, there's a lot of little elements that aren't just a case of well we'll remove it from the menu or we'll replace it with something else you can still use it but it's how you use it and those refinements I suppose it's like tinkering with the way that you use it basically. Great thanks for that answer. 